Hey everybody, today in our ongoing series on the DIR-685, we're going to talk about adding a hard drive for storage. Hi everybody, and welcome back to another episode of D-Link TV DIY. I'm Mike, and I'm here to help you get more out of your network. So today on our ongoing series of uh, episodes on the DIR-685, what I wanted to talk to you about was adding a hard drive for storage. This can be used for um, you know, viewing photos on the digital picture frame that's built in, or using it as a media uh, server to stream movies and music and stuff like that. It's very simple. All you need to do is take the router and turn it, and you'll see on the side here there's a little door. Now if you open that up, you can take a two and a half inch serial ATA laptop hard drive and just slide it in here all the way down until it's seated in. Then close the little door. Now all you have to do is plug the router in and wait for it to boot up. Once it's finished booting, we'll come back and we'll format the hard drive. Now that the router's rebooted, what we're going to do is let it format the hard drive by selecting yes using the touch sensitive buttons. So now that we have our hard drive installed and we've, had, we've formatted it, what we need to do is map a network hard drive so that we can get to uh, the network attached storage locally. And then we're also going to set up an FTP server with dynamic DNS so that we can easily get to it remotely. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create some folders on the network attached storage uh, built into the DIR-685. And we can do that by opening up uh, your uh, Windows Explorer and then in the address bar you do two backslashes and 192.168.0.1 which is the IP address of the router. And when you hit enter now you can see the hard drive is uh, going to have some type of funny name like this. Um, you can rename that if you want, but it's not really necessary since that's going to be the uh, root uh, directory, which we don't want people going to. So if you open this up, now in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called uh, media. And then inside of this media folder, I'm going to make one for uh, music, one for videos, and one for um, pictures. Now that we have these, what we're going to do is we're going to map a network drive. And you can do that really easily by just clicking on what you see in the address bar here so that it's highlighted. Right click and go down to copy. And then go up to the tools button and say map network drive. Now if you just take and paste what we just copied into there and click finish, now you've mapped a network drive to get to the hard drive on the DIR-685. Now let's go into the interface and I'll show you how to set up the FTP server and stuff like that. So if you log into the router like you normally would and click the storage tab here at the top, you'll get to the disk management page. Um, this gives you the statistics on the hard drive itself. This is where you would format the hard drive if it's a, a new hard drive or if you want to erase the contents that are on it. And um, also this is where there's uh, the timeout. Um, if you don't use the hard drive that often, you might want to set it to say like five minutes. But if you're you know, accessing the hard drive fairly often, you might want to set it to 30 minutes. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up the FTP server. Uh, but before we set up the FTP server, we need to set up some users and groups. Now this is uh, fairly simple. Right underneath the disk management uh, button on the left, you'll see the users and groups. Now um, all we need to do is uh, come up with a username. I'll go with Mike. Uh, give that username a password. Uh, confirm the password and then um, add it. Now that's going to add it to our list of users and groups and um, that's all we really need to do there. That's It's really simple. Then um, over underneath the, the users and groups you'll see the FTP server. Click that and then um, we are going to want to add our user. And we want to give them access by clicking the browse button and then 
clicking into uh, that's that long name that we saw before that's the root directory what we want to do is give him access to the media folder that we created so all you want to do is you want to apply that by selecting apply and then save um, now we want to enable the FTP and then save the settings once this uh, saves you'll see that the FTP server should say started right here so the only other thing that we need to do is open up some ports just click the advanced tab at the top which will take you to the port forwarding rules page now the first rule here we can enable by putting a check mark and then under the application uh, drop down choose FTP and then click the little uh, arrows to lock it in that'll open up all of the ports and then the IP address is going to be the land side IP address of the DIR 685 which is the 192.168.0.1 um, and then save the settings um, now from the outside anybody that's trying to get in uh, would be able to get into the FTP you know if they had the username and password um, that's if they knew what the uh, public IP address is which is right here which you can use to get into the uh, FTP if you add a colon 21 to it but what I'm going to show you now is how to set up a dynamic DNS uh, address to make it more simpler to get to and in case your IP address changes so to get a dynamic DNS name which is uh, a name that you can use like dlink.com instead of having to know what your public IP address is for your home network. Um, now, all you have to do is go to dlinkddns.com and create an account. And once you have the account, uh, just log in, um, and then you're going to want to click the add host button. The host is the name that we were talking about. So um, I'm just going to create a, uh, a name here. And then what you want to do is you want to just copy this IP address here, unless you're using a proxy. Uh, and if you don't know what a proxy is, um, you'll know if you're using one. Um, the only time you would really need to use the new IP address uh, button is if you know for a fact that your IP address is changed otherwise just use the one that we just copied and then click Save and now this right here is going to be your dynamic uh, DDNS name so go ahead and write that down and then I'll show you where we're gonna put that so log into your router and click the tools tab at the top and then the dynamic DNS button to the left then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a check mark in the enable DDNS button. Make sure that the server address is set to the dlinkddns.com. And then you're going to want to type in the host name that you had created at dlinkddns.com. Then you're going to want to use the, uh, the username and password that you had um, chosen for your account at dlinkddns.com. Um, then go ahead and save your settings. Now what that's going to do is that's going to attach your router to that dynamic uh, DNS name. So from now on, whenever you want to be able to get to your FTP, you're going to use that dynamic DNS name. To access your FTP, now all you need to do is open up a new browser window or um, a new tab and type in FTP colon forward slash forward slash and then enter in the host name that we had created at dlinkddns.com. When we hit enter, we can now see the FTP and you can get to like the pictures directory when you go to try and download something it's going to ask you for the username and password now this is what the username and password that we had created in the users and groups menu inside the router so now when I say log on I can get to a picture 
that Leonardo da Vinci drew when he was four. So now that we can easily connect to the network attached storage uh, using our computers locally and remotely, what I'm going to do next week is I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you can download some movies and music and stuff and then stream it to say like a media player or your computer. So that's going to do it for this episode of D-Link TV DIY. I'm Mike and thanks for watching.